court, which concluded four days of submission, said it has to see mountains of documents before giving its final verdict. Earlier, the respondents against the appeal had asked the Court of Appeal not to entertain the case, arguing that the promoters were advancing their own self-interests. The respondents claim the 2010 constitution was drafted after a long history of totalitarian rule and the court should not accept this country to slide back. The four days of the BBI appeal hearing came to an end on Friday evening with the remaining respondents seeking the court to uphold the High Court judgment that declared the BBI initiative was unconstitutional. Starting off the hearing was Christian Andole who questioned the funding of the initiative saying those who appropriated state funds must be made to pay. Was sufficient for an order to make good the loss of public funds. No evidence was needed for that order to be made. And my lords, the history of the erstwhile constitution of Kenya, with its six provisions on public finance, never provided for a provision akin to Article 226.5. KHRC and Kituo Chashiria, represented by Lord John Haminwa, asked the court to throw out the appeal as it had no merit, saying the submissions made by the petitioners were pedestrian and not in good faith. The submissions were made that were made before you were pedestrian submissions. Were not in good faith. Instead, my lord, I'm inviting you respectfully. You uphold the judgment of the High Court and you improve on it. Hamino enumerated the history the Kenyan constitution has taken to its present form and that Kenyans sought to cushion themselves from totalitarians who had appetite for power. And whatever problems we have in this country have absolutely nothing to do with the, po with the constitution. They have nothing to do with the law. They have something to do with ourselves and particularly the political class. When it comes to violence, they are the ones who are actually, one can suspect, they are really the ones who are fueling this. Martha Karua, who was representing three Amishi, asked the court to use its power to stop modern dictators from using such amendments against the will of the people. Are uh, using the constitution or constitutional amendments as a special purpose vehicle to claw away on civil liberties and democratic gains. The main reason why we're here is that particular bill. That one is completely finished. If they want to appeal and take us to the Supreme Court, to Nawangoja Uku, no problem. We'll meet up there. No problem. But in terms of proper jurisdiction, I mean, they shouldn't waste anybody else's time. This thing should end at this appellate level. And if they want to change the constitution, let them follow the proper procedure one amendment at a time but in making the final submissions while responding bbi secretary tindry lodinga represented by lawyer james orengo asked the court of appeal to overturn the high court ruling saying it had been provided with evidence beyond reasonable doubt that the president was not a promoter if the president can be these ordinary things including being a voter i do not see why he cannot be uh, a promoter. But we're not saying that the, in this instance he was a promoter. The documentation is clear from the record and the, and the bundles and the records of the IABC. The promoters were Junet, Mohammed, and Waweru, and IABC confirmed. I submit that there is no constitution outside the constitution, and there is no constitutional legitimacy outside the constitution. Lawyer Kimani Kiragu, representing the president, said it was not fair that the court was being asked to order the head of state to refund money without any evidence to support the claim. Nobody has even suggested that this petition was served on the president. All you are being told to do is to say, because we placed it before the court, we must ask you to make orders against the president. What happened to his right to a fair trial? Well, according to the judges, the judgment will be delivered on the 20th of August at 9 a.m. Very good preparation. You can see the volumes of papers and documents that we must plow through. We will do that and we'll give our judgment on 20th August 2021 at 9 a.m.
Well, after the four days of lengthy submissions from both the respondents and the appellants, the seven-judge bench now will take up to seven weeks to go write a judgment as the supporters and opposers of the Building Bridges Initiative wait to see whether they'll be fulfilled with the judgment or they will head to the Supreme Court. For Easy Friday, I'm Serafina Robbie.